which is a great thing that I love doing. Um, thank you for everybody that came out to help help with that. Um, I know at first it's just some of you all thought it was a bit challenging and you found out that nobody was shot, nobody got robbed, nobody was beat up, nobody was cursed out, you know, no doors were slammed in your face. Everything was well I mean, so we, see here's the thing, we gotta learn how to go out to the people. We gotta start with expecting people to come to us. Okay? We gotta go to in, into the homes of individuals and pray with them. You know, we always wanna just sit back and ah, if they want it, they'll come. But you know, most of the time people don't even know what they need. That's why they're still going through the same thing they're going through. Amen. And how they know unless we come into them. Amen. You know? A child will crawl forever usually until you begin to help them learn something different. They'll keep pooping on themselves. You know, some kids, they, they even know that they, that they don't want it on them, but they just won't go to the pot, will they? And so someone trains them, right? Amen? Amen. We gotta go to them. We gotta stop being, we gotta stop being so comfortable. All right. So, but this morning, this message I want to deal with you on is um, one that a message that we all know the story of, but we sometimes miss some things that God has shown us. We're going to be coming out of the Book of Judges. Now, I love, you know, those of you that know me love, know I love the Book of Judges, <laughs> and we're going to be dealing with Samson. So we're going to be starting in chapter thirteen. Now, we all know the story of Samson. Amen. Amen. You all know the story of Samson, right? Amen. Samson and Delilah. Okay. Now, but here's the thing. Uh, I know many people watch and like, why is he dressed like this? Because today we're going to deal with not allowing your confidence to become your weakness. The reason I'm dressed like this is because oftentimes, as men, we find confidence in our clothing, don't we? You know, it's, it's, it's nothing like a sharp dressed man, right? And even as pastors, we. Pastors, we know how to dress. Now, you know, we, 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 from the robes to the suits to the shoes. And we find confidence in that. And, you know, it's something about when a man puts on a nice tailor-made suit, he walks a little bit more upright. Amen? He has a little bit more swag in his step. But that means that we're putting confidence in the wrong things, aren't we? We're putting confidence in things that are material and not realizing I'm that same man without that suit than I am with that suit, amen? Amen. You know, women have the same, do go through the same thing. You know, you feel that, well, my hair ain't done, and my clothes ain't right, and my shoe ain't right, and my purse, and this, this. But you're the, aren't you the same woman whether or not you have a weave in your hair than if you don't? Aren't you that same woman? Has anything changed? <laughs> the makeup that you put on, has anything changed on your personal, inside of you? You're the same person. But what happens is, we sometimes, uh, we allow our confidence to become our weakness, and we fail to realize that the strength isn't from what we have, the strength is from what God has given us. And we begin to violate that. So that's the basis of what we're going to be dealing with today. So if you would turn with me to Judges 13, starting with verse uh, 2, it says, In those days, a man named Manoah, from the tribe of Dan, lived in the town of Zerah. His wife was unable to become pregnant, and they had, she had no children. The angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife and said, Even though you have been unable to have children, you will soon become pregnant and give birth to a son. Here's the command. So be careful. You must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink, nor eat any forbidden fruit. You will become pregnant, give birth to a son, and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. He will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. Now, I wanted you to understand this. When God has purposed you, he's purposed you before you were even created to be you. When God has purposed you, he's purposed you before you were even created to be you. That means that he's prepared a way for you. The problem is we tend to move outside of the will of God and get in the way of God. Okay? Now, here's the a, here's a whole miracle in this is the fact that this woman who was barren, she went in there and told her husband. Her husband was like, I don't 
wait a minute, hold on, I gotta see this for myself. Okay, I, he prayed that the angel of the Lord would come back and came back and revealed himself to the wife again. And then he says, I, 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 wait a minute, I need to see him take me to this angel. And he, the husband, being the man, got with the wife and she took him to where she saw this guy. And he was still there. And he told him, he says, listen, he says, okay, I didn't know what are some other instructions. Like we do when I like, we think it's a little bit more deeper than it is when God said, just keep my covenant. He said, What's, what else do I got to do for this, for my son to be a great leader? He said, just don't eat of what I say don't eat of, don't get drunk, and don't cut his hair. That's it. That's all I ask of you. How to do overcomplicate God with everything else? And we miss it. Because we're so busy thinking that it has to be deeper. It has to be more to it. And God is saying, you know, it is really just that simple. Don't keep my covenant. Serve me. Love me. That's it. Now, what we're going to do is, what happened with Samson, we're going to move on forward to um, chapter 16. But what happened with Samson, Samson found this woman, this Philistine woman that he loved. And he went through some stuff with her. And Samson has a problem with we, will, we learn in these chapters that Samson has a problem with covenants and keeping his mouth shut. Okay? Like most men, he don't know how to keep his mouth shut to women. He want to always share and say too much. He, was, he, he went, met this one woman, he wanted to marry her, and loved her, she was a Philistine, and her dad, dad said no. He said, but daddy, I want her. He was like, okay. He went to go marry her, and then he says, so as an offering, they brought all, all, the, all these bride, uh, groomsmen in, and he was like, listen, I'll give all of y'all coats if you do if you can solve this riddle. But if you can't solve the riddle, all of you gotta give me these tunics. Well they kept they went for days and they couldn't find it. And they was like, listen, you need to go to go to Samson and find out what does that riddle mean. Y'all yeah, can read up on it, I'm not gonna tell you the whole story. But what happens is Samson spills the beans to her. And what does she do? She goes out and tells them. They come back and then realize what happened, tell him the answer to the riddle. He knows that only she had to reveal it to him. Because what? Samson couldn't keep his mouth shut. You understand? So I'm giving you, I'm setting up how Samson was. Later on, Samson, it goes on and says Samson was in town and he, he met with his, with his whore. He loved women. He went with her a lot and, you know, he tried to get, she tried to get him to tell him the secret. Okay? And it didn't happen. But then we come back. He meets this woman named Delilah. Now Delilah is this woman who he loves again, Philistine. You know, I don't know. We got some something for them women. You know, you know, you know. All men have a certain type of woman that he's, that he's weak for. Amen. You know, and he's just he has his weakness for her. I don't care what it is. Maybe long hair. Maybe leg. Maybe booty. Well, I don't know what it is, but something about this woman that he was just crazy about. And this woman. They kept coming to her and said, how can, what is the source of Samson's strength? And in this, she would ask him, and Samson said, if you bound me with a rope, then I, can, I will be free. I, I will lose my strength. So he bound, she, they bound him. And she said, oh, Samson, they're coming in to take it. Because she told him, and she, he snapped the ropes. He said, if you braided my hair, my, my locks of hair, his hair was like a dreads. If you braided them and interwove them, then I'll become a wicked. And that happened, and he, he got free. You know, it, 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 this happened, and, said, and she did this, and she, three times she said, I want you to pick up with me in Judges 16, in verse 15. It says, Then Delilah pouted. How can you tell me? I love you when you don't share your secrets with me. You made fun of me three times now. And you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to the death of it. Now, in the King James Version, it reads a little bit different. The King James Version says that he, it, it says, and it came to pass when she was pressed, when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so 
his soul was vexed unto death. Have you ever been nagged that you just were so tired of somebody nagging at you? That you like, you know what, fine, I'm going to give you what you want just to shut up and leave me alone. And that's what I want to pick up at. What we have to understand in our life is, what the, here's where Samson went wrong. Samson found strength in his strength and not his covenant. So remember that. Write that down. He found strength in his strength and his ability and not his covenant. See, the covenant that you have with God is never to be broken. See, what we have to understand is when we say we're going to serve God, that means we don't serve God until something else happens. We serve God forever. We don't serve God in just the up days and down and, and, and the up days and days of, of blessings. We serve God in the down days. We don't serve him just in sunshine and no rain. We serve him in the thunderstorm. We don't serve God when there's a land of plenty, but we also serve God in the time of drought. And we have to realize that we cannot break a covenant with God. See, and, and the thing is, when you break a covenant with God, you lose power. The moment he began to open his mouth, every time he broke a covenant, he told a secret, he lost out. He lost power. We cannot open our mouths and break a covenant. Well, what do you mean by covenant? When you, I don't care if it's a marriage covenant. I don't care if it's a promissory covenant. I don't care if it's the laws of God. I don't care if it's the rules that you're supposed to keep. But the moment you begin to break that covenant, you will lose your power. Because the power didn't come from what you have. The power came from what was given to you by God. So why would you break a promise with the in other words, why would you bite the hand that feeds you? Why would you sit back and get an attitude over the hand that feeds you? Because the hand is not giving you what you want right now. It doesn't matter. You never break the covenant. You break a covenant, you lose blessings. Because God is saying, how can I trust you? How can I trust you if you can't keep your word and your promise with me? Marriages don't fall apart because they fall out of love. They fall apart because they fall out of money. And now they fall apart because they fall out of selfishness and they're just selfish. You know that, right? It's what I want. God says, since when did it become about what you want? If I, I got a question for you. If God purposed you before he created you, how can it be about what you want? You ever thought about that? If God purposed you before he created you, how is it about what you want? Is it possible? For it to be about you now? But we want to get mad at God because God, 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 he's like, listen, the problem is, while you're having, you're catching so much hell, I've said this so many times before, the problem is this, you're running in the wrong race. And you're running for the wrong thing. You know? I mean, I, I was watching the uh, French Open yesterday. And you know, I, I and I was watching Serena doing her thing, and I hate that she lost, but you know, I, and I was trying to I was trying to explain some things to my wife, and she was like, "Why not cheer for Serena?" And I was like, "Well, the other time I was like, well, the girls from France, and that's it. They, I don't like it that you know when Serena get a point, it's it's only like, uh, when the other girl get a point, like, ah! but I realized something. I said, "Wait a minute, hold on. Serena had won had won this Grand Slam. I forgot how many times they said. I think like eleven times or whatever. But the thing is." This girl had never won before. Matter of fact, she was the youngest in Spain hadn't won it before. And I realized, and I looked, when I looked at the picture, I had to think about as Serena, the hardest thing about being on top is being on top. You know that? The hardest thing about being on top is being on top. Because you, 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 you begin to think that you're not worthy of it. And how many of y'all would have been heartbroken? That if you were Serena and you lost the French Open to this new cover. Why? Here's the thing. 
Many of us would have, but it wouldn't have made a difference. I was watching, I was watching TV and I realized, and I believe Serena Williams is in Beyonce's video. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, wait a minute, this chick is doing videos. This chick is going to the Olympics. This chick is winning grand slams everywhere else. She's in, she's in rappers videos, she's in movies, she was just in a, another movie. I'm sitting here, why are we sweating over little things that we may lose when we still won? They couldn't even take, I, the, if you looked at the paper, it didn't even have the girl who won by herself. It had her answering. So, but we worried about the fact that I didn't come in first and God is saying, listen, you missing it, you still relevant. Just because you didn't come in first, you're still relevant. Because I didn't purpose you to come in first all the time. I didn't purpose you to win the way you thought you was going to win all the time. I purpose you for something else. But we get mad because it doesn't look like what we want it to look like. You get tired of saying the same winners all the time, don't you? How many of y'all would play football, what, keep playing, put the tickets to go to football games if for 10 years the same team won every year? Why was this the Patriots? <laughs> okay, he's been evicted from church because this is Atlanta <laughs> Cloud because I don't know what he's talking about. He's a deep red prayer for people. Um, I mean, you would get tired of it. You wouldn't, people wouldn't even want to, I, I, I remember my daughter was um, doing competitive cheerleading, you know, she's not anymore. Um, when she was doing the better cheer, the team she cheered for, it was a thing called the Stingray Effect, because they cheer for stingrays. And teams would literally pull out of a competition when they saw them there. Because they just said, we know they're going to win. Now, I know it, it seems like that's all fine and dandy, but that can be annoying at times. You know? But we, we so God says, listen, I got to create some balance in your life. How can you appreciate being on top if you've never been on bottom? And, how, and the thing is, some of us never make it to the top because we keep pouting on the bottom. The next thing is, we, we, we never got to place anything else before your covenant. See, Samson, he placed a woman before his covenant. He placed peace before his covenant. Think about it. Every time there was a woman involved, what would Samson do? Just run his mouth and give up. Matter of fact, I'm just trying to understand. I don't think I can lay my head in the lap of a woman who three times have already tried to get me killed and bound. But that's just how I mean, how many are. We make those same stupid mistakes, don't we? Some of us. You know? We, we, you, you listen, bro, you know, you see her walking down the street. First of all, she walking down the street pushing a stroller and got another kid in her hand. I'm not disrespecting single moms, but what I'm saying is this. You already know these type of women going to get you in trouble, okay? You already know you can't handle them. You can't handle the project chick because she going she gonna to run you crazy. She going to take all your money and she going to leave you dry. You know this. I had a friend, a close friend of mine, my cousin, who's in jail right now. He said, man, I can't deal with light skin girls. Red bones always get me in trouble, but I can't stay away from them. And every time he dealt with them, he ended up going to jail. Not that something he did to them, it was just, it was, they were just bad luck for them. Okay? Every time. Red, he was like, man, I can't mess with them. Red bones bad luck for them. So why do you keep dealing with them? I don't know. Well, learn your lesson. Many of us keep bitten by, keep messed up because we keep doing the same thing over and over again. We keep acting the same way over and over again. We put everything else before. You can't put your job. You can't put money. You can't put your love. You watch this. You can't even put the power that God gave you before God. Now this is for y'all church folk. Your anointing is not more important than God. Your anointing does not supersede God. And I think we forget that sometimes. We feel that the anointing that God has given us gives us a key and a pass to not do what God has called us to do. I'm anointed. I, God is like, I anointed you. I gave it to you. Yeah, I know my gifts come without repentance, but guess what? That life you got, I can't shorten it for you. 
things to change. Matter of fact, I can allow your wages to come into play of your sin. Because the wages of sin is what? Death. God says, I can actually cash in those checks that you wrote. Keep it up. Because your power, your anointing does not supersede my covenant. And that was the thing that Samson dealt with. He began to rip thinking that if you think about it, Samson was telling her these things because he realized he could always still get through with it. He could always make a way. He will always be Samson. And, and, and here's the thing. If you don't believe me, walk with me. It says in verse, set, verse 18, it says, Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth. So she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time. She said, for he's finally told me a secret. So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in, ha in their hands. Delilah loved Samson to sleep with, with his head in her lap. Mm. And then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his head. And this way she began to bring him down. And his strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson! The Philistines have come to capture you. When he woke up, he thought, I, I, I will watch this. Here it is. I will do as I as before and shake myself free. I will do as before and shake myself free. You cannot expect God to keep you with power when you break your covenant with God. You don't believe me? How many times you said, God, I promise if you get me out of this situation, I'll never do it again. Anybody ever said that? God, if you do this, I promise I'll be in church every Sunday and I'll tithe every week and i give everything and i give my time and my talent and my treasure. God, if you just bless me here, if you provide for me, if you do it for me right now, God, I, I promise I will do it. I promise I'm going to be the best servant. I promise, God, I promise. And what happens? God delivers us son, doesn't he? But do we follow through with our promise? No, we don't. We begin to make excuses. Whoa, 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 don't let me lose what I got. I promise God I'm, I'm, I'm going to come home every night. Don't let me lose my house. I, I, I promise God I'm, I'm going to love my spouse more. Just don't, don't let me end up losing my spouse. <laughs> don't let me lose my family. Don't let me, don't, 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 don't let me down, God. Just don't, 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 don't let me down. And God has said, but I give you chance of the chance of the chance of the chance. I will allow this woman to go ahead and do this and you, and you still didn't realize that she was just because she was good to you, she wasn't good for you. He says, you don't get it. We got to realize that we have to stop. We got to stop. We got to realize God is saying, I don't have time for you to be playing with me. There's a job I created you for. Any of y'all been hired to do a job? What happens if you don't do that job? You lose that job, don't you? You were created to do a job. So by default, what should happen if you, lose, if you don't do that job? So I don't care how long it may look. You know, I want you to think about it. Samson's mother was created to give, give birth. But it took forever, didn't it? Where people even said she was barren. Sarai was created to give birth, to be a wife, but it took forever. Look, where it looked like it was over, didn't it? But she didn't give up. So why are we thinking that it's over? 
Why are we turning in and throwing in a towel? See, the problem is we, we don't want to let God be God. But then, thirdly, what we got to understand is we can allow other people's temperament to go against God's will. Why did Samson end up telling her the truth? Because she was nagging him to death, right? Isn't that what the scripture said? She was nagging him to death. I keep trying to tell y'all that whole thing, happy wife, happy life, is not of God. Be the man of God God calls you to be. We in June. I'm gonna take, I wanna tell you how much the enemy hates me. We're in June. Okay? How many Father's Day commercials have you seen? Anybody seen any yet? You seen one person seen something? How many times have you seen it? Once? When we were in May, when we were in April, in April, you started hearing about Mother's Day, didn't you? Coming into May. You'll never forget about Mother's Day, do you? You know Mother's Day, Amy. Come on, tell the truth. We know Mother's Day, don't we? Father's Day? Matter of fact, as a matter of fact, on social media, you're going to see all these hashtag we did it on our own, hashtag team mom and team mom dad, hashtag don't need no man, hashtag where daddy at, hashtag no good. You know, all these, you'll see that. On Mother's Day, you didn't see no hashtag I did it by myself without no woman. Why? Because men don't do that. We don't, we, we don't need that. We don't need that. They're single dads out here, but we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't publicize like that. We don't need that. You get what I'm saying? Men will do, as a matter of fact, it, studies have proven that there are more men in the home than out of the home that take care of their children. Absolutely. But you, we don't do that. We don't say nothing about that. We want to make it seem like we ain't doing nothing. I'm talking about black men that are involved in their children's life. It is not the majority that black men are not taking care of their children. Actually, we are. But society doesn't portray that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because see, here's the problem. Many of you all don't like the way that we raise our children because we're raising them right by God. We don't, men don't raise children emotionally. Men raise children structurally. Mm -hmm. We're structure-oriented. This is how it is. This is how it's going to be. Now, what happened with Samson is Samson didn't man up. Samson let this woman nag him to death. He let this woman nag him out of a covenant, nag him out of a promise. How many men in the Bible allowed a woman to just take their way and nag them somewhere? We do that even do it, do it now in our lives. I know, you know, I, I know church, you shouldn't say that because you got more women than I. For those that watch, yes, I got more women here than men. And I know you're like, Pastor, why would you say it? But it's the truth. The truth shall set you free. Listen, be a man about it. This is June. Okay? This, this Father's Day is in this month. Matter of fact, it's two weeks away. Am I correct? You know? Stop, stop looking at us and thinking that you're going to give us a pair of socks and a tie. Stop saying that you're going to let me be a man. You can't let me be nothing. Only thing you can do is stop trying to be in front place and take take the lead. See, your, your statement is, I'm going to let a man be a man. No, you're going to stop trying to be a man. Amen. Okay? Now, men, you got to understand, you got to man up. Because a woman will take control if you let her. She going to get an attitude, but guess what? She going to get an attitude if you do good, if you do bad, I promise you. You can come home and give her a diamond ring tomorrow, and she want to be the next. She gonna have an attitude. Why are you trying? They're emotional creatures. We keep trying. What we try to do is, is, is deal with the temperature. Listen, we try to set, see what the temperature is. I heard a great statement said by a great pastor, Ben Lang. He said this statement. Men are not the thermometers in a marriage. We are the thermostat. I wish I had a said it. But he said it. <laughs> now I'm gonna give you one more time. I'm gonna give you the credit one more time, Ben, and in his mind. <laughs> but we are not the thermometer. We don't measure the temperature, the atmosphere. We set it. You realize she acting crazy? Then you turn it down a little bit. You realize she's a little bit too frigid? Then you turn it up just a little. Can't turn it up too high, though. 
Because they know how to turn up. You know what I'm saying? Don't get past 75 because you ain't gonna be, it's going to be hard to cool down. Think about it. How many times you ever heard of a man turning up? You don't hear, that ain't even our statement, have you? We don't even hear this, I'm turned up. We don't really do that. But that's what I'm saying. What Samson did is he allowed somebody else's temp temp temperament. You got to stay cool. And this goes for all believers. You got to stay cool. I don't care if you in the store and someone at that side and the, and, and the cashier want to act belligerent with you. Yes, I understand. But listen, I'm trying to tell you, this is the problem. Well, you just want to come in here. Yeah, I, I understand. I know something. And don't, don't do this, church folk. Don't say, I'm going to pray for you. Don't do that in the midst of an argument. You just, what you need is put kerosene on the fire. You know y'all don't see me. I'm just going to pray for you. Jesus ain't in that. You, if you want to, what does the Bible say? You want to win something, win it through love. I understand that. I understand, sister. I understand, sister. It's okay. It's all right. Uh, I get it. Ooh, yeah. For real? Mm, yeah. You know what? I realize. I'm sorry. You, I need to probably talk to somebody else. I'm going to tell them that you, you did everything you could do, and I thank you for it. Okay? Thank you. Is there somebody else that can help me? Because I, I, I know you got other people you got to deal with. I don't want to hold you up. I don't want to hinder you. And I, and I know that you, you, you're you trying. But make, make, make it, and don't say things like, this is above your head. Because you know you should, what you just did was just demean them. But you should, this is above you. I need somebody. No. Just say, I, you know what? I need, I need to get with someone who, who can actually, because I know you, your time is valuable. Okay? Do you see how that, that's the third step? It adjusts the temperature. And I'm looking at it, and it's so funny. I wish y'all were here. The women even in here, even my wife, like, mm -mm, no, I'm going to let you know. No, 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 no. Mm. Listen, you're missing your blessings by turning up and letting them. It ain't that deep. Why is this person you don't even know worth you losing your blessings for? Why? Somebody cut you off, and you all, now you mad. I, I was driving yesterday trying to get over, and I, I, it was so, and it happens all the time. And I'm not disrespecting women, but here's the thing. Every time, if, I, if I'm trying to get over and I see somebody from behind me, and I look, and it's a woman, and, and I'm like, it, it was that deep, it, it was that serious that I couldn't just get, I really wasn't even trying to get in front of you, I was trying to get another lane over, but it, it's okay. And what ends up happening is, I always still end up in front of them. I always end up in front of them. You know, when I speed and doing something crazy. And I'm asking myself, was it worth it? What if your brakes had gave out because you were so busy trying to stop me from getting in front of you? Was it worth it? Is it worth getting turned up over? Is it worth it? Give God what he wants. Why I gotta play second fiddle? Why my feelings don't matter? Why I don't care? Because that's the thing. Why is it what I want don't matter? It's not what you want don't matter, but you don't even know what you want. You don't. What you, because what you should want should be the desire of God. It's what God wants for you, not what you want for yourself. You know? Never let someone compromise your values. Because that's what, you, that's what he did, didn't he? He compromised his covenant with God. I don't care how fine he is. Team abstain. Absence. <laughs> Keep your values. That's why all y'all get ready to go to college. Now, absence. I don't care. Because I'm going to tell you, in college, what, man, we got some good game. Am I right? We got, bro, we got some. We know what to say. We know, we, and we know the moment. We we know. We don't. We, it, good, good God, they, they they don't come at you front ways. They come sideways. You know. The only ones you gotta watch out for the ones that's just a friend. <laughs> Try to tell you. Now, but team no compromise. Don't compromise your standards with God. What do you mean by that? That means, well, if it looks a little shady, I'm not really, it's not really a sin. Mm -mm. See, you compromise. Or, I love him though. I love her though. You compromised. He had no business laying his head in her lap. Bottom line. He had no business doing it. 
You know? And then he was so comfortable with it, he went to sleep. I don't know about you, but back in my day, I couldn't just sleep over spending the night at somebody's house. I wasn't that comfortable. You know, because you never know who may come in. I learned when I was a young kid, I was a young, very young lad at the age of 16, that this woman said she was single. And went over there and dealing with what I, what I shouldn't have been doing because I was sinning for the first, most part. I, 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 I was sinning, I had, well I had sin on my mind. And I, I lied to my boys, told them I was going to the mall. So much so that I parked my car at the train station and called the train to this girl's house. And just so my boys and everybody said, John, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. One of my boys sitting in church today even said, don't do it. <laughs> I didn't listen. Went over there. Got the worst butt whipping of my life by three or four dudes. So funny, this young lady said, here's the thing, I, I was compromising it, and I said, you broke up, I thought you didn't have a boyfriend, she said, I don't, I, I broke up with him, but he don't know it yet. <laughs> I got, I, I was like Samson, I had seen that this woman was a delight. But yet, and, 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 what, and, and, and what reminds me is because Delilah ran and hid when the Philistines came in. This young lady ran and hid <laughs> when these guys came in. <laughs> I was not that. I was I was not that so bad. I couldn't even remember my own phone number. I had to call my boy's phone number. But my thing is. I was compromising my values. You know, I compromised because they said, John, you don't have no dealings dealing with her. Dude, you got, you got this woman, this woman, this woman. Why are you dealing with her? She's not, that's not even your lead, bro. You better than that. Nah, you know, you know, when you got confidence in yourself and you think it's about you, you don't hear what nobody said. My ears were ringing for a while too. Having bottles and four by fours, most of the stuff in my head. But I learned a valuable lesson. That it's not about how strong I think I am. I stepped outside. I broke a covenant. How? Because I lied. Because <clears throat> had I told my boys the truth about where I was going, they really would have been like, nah, John, let's go here. But I lied. I had sin on my mind and I sinned to go sin. How many of us do that? We, we, we so bad at sin that we'll sin to go do sin. And then try to act like it's okay. And wonder what went wrong. Because it was wrong from the start. Amen? Samson was wrong from the start. He laid his head in the wrong lap. Where it should have been with God. Never let someone nag you to death. And never let your hurt or anger cause you to sin against the covenant and go against the covenant. But the thing you got to remember, I love about Samson, is that God's will will be done. If you remember in the story, the whole purpose for creating Samson was to begin to set the Israelites free from the Philistines, right? Remember something, just because you don't do what God wants you to do, what God wants you to do, it doesn't mean that God's will won't be done. Amen. In closing, in chapter 16, verse 26, it says, Samson said to the young servant who was leading him, by the hand because they bound Samson took him down and the Philistines got so drunk that they went ahead and said bring this Samson back up here parade him in front of us this guy that has been having all this strength and causes us a headache let's see him you know how folk, when folk get drunk they want to show out don't they they want to flex so they want to bring him hither 
So, 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 it, 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 it says, Samson says, place my hands, he told the servant of the Lord, place my hands against the pillars that hold up the temple. And the pillars were named, you know, the, the, the establishment and government. Okay? Government establishment. Those are the names of the temple, of the pillars. And it says, I want to rest against them. Now, the temple was completely filled with people. All the, this is, all the Philistine rulers were there. And about 3,000 men and women on the roof who were watching as Samson abused, amused them. Then Samson prays the Lord. This is how God, good God is. He says, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. Why? Because he realized that he had left God. God didn't leave him. He left God. Sometimes we got to go back and ask God. Plead with God. Oh God, please strengthen me one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held the temple. Push it against them with both hands, he prayed. Let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down with the Philistine rulers and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had during his entire lifetime. God's will will be done. Even if it's at the expense of your life. But it doesn't to be. He brought down the establishment in government and killed all the oppressors of the children of Israel. Because he realized that it wasn't about his purpose. Samson went through his life trying to please women. But in the end, he realized he had to die for God. It wasn't about what he wanted. It was about what it was purposeful. Remember, number four, God's will will be done. And I look at all of this and it reminds me of a guy that was purposed before birth. Some of you may say, if I was purposed before birth, why is it taking me so long? And I say, look at Christ. He was purposed before birth. It took 30 years before his purpose began to come into fruition. And then you may say, but yeah, yeah, but I'm not just, but listen, even in that he went through 30 years and began to learn things that did not seem that it had anything to do with what God called him to do. He learned to be a carpenter. What does that have to do with winning souls? Because he learned how to build a kingdom. Do you realize that he was the son of God, but yet at the same time he was submissive? You can't lead until you can follow. Because understanding how to follow will teach you how to lead. It teaches humility and submission. And you realize that there's only one true leader, and that is God. God is, remember the scripture, it says, how can you love your brother who you see every day? How can you hate your brother who you see every day, but yet you claim me, saying that you love me? How can you hate him? So how can you serve, say you can serve God, when you can't even serve him? I talk to couples all the time. And so I'm like, how can you say, when I get married, I'm going to do this. When I get married, I'm like, you can't do it being single. What makes you think, oh, that is you got a ring on your finger. Now you can do it. No, you got to practice it in. You got to practice it in. You got to go through that. So my thing to you is, Christ went through the same thing of being purpose before birth. But even at being purpose before birth, he stayed the course. He didn't call, get caught up in his strength. He was tested after he was baptized. He went into the wilderness to be tempted, amen? 
He was even tested again in death. Because many of us, as I said before, if we sit on that hill of Golgotha, if we was on Calvary, if we was there on the cross, we would have brought down the heavens to strike everybody down. We would have tried to pull a Samson move and kill everybody, wouldn't we? I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory. Now y'all going with me. Because I'm a son of God. I'm going to show you who got the last lap. I'm going to show you who got power. Remember, with the thermostat, not the thermometer. Cool it down, warm it up, make it just right. You can't go out in a blaze of glory. Because it ain't about your glory. It ain't even your story. It's about God. So you need to stop compromising. Stop turning up. Stop getting mad. Stop worrying about how you, I ain't gonna let nobody treat me this way. I don't care how they treat you. I don't care if they spit on you. Yes, I said that. You still don't react. <laughs> they spit on Christ, they beat Christ. You still don't react. <clears throat> I know many of y'all live in my past. I, I was with you until you said that now. Somebody exchange your bodily fluids. I just say, I, I, I can't roll with you, Pastor. Think of the testimony. Think about Dr. King. Everybody want to be a leader, but you don't even want to do what it takes to, to lead. And that means submitting. That's why you can't get leadership. You can't get what you want. Because of the fact that they know that God knows that if you get it, you're going to rule with an iron fist. He says he's tired of that. He needs leaders that can lead with compassion and heart, with the love of Christ. That are not that are not thermometers, but are thermostats. Amen. Amen. Let us stand.